Well, hey there, and welcome to the A Bedroom of the Dollhouse for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and you selfers for November 4th, the day of the provocateur. That's right. And here at the top of the page is a visual representation of the day of the provocateur. We have us. Oh, what could it be? Boom. Well, it looks to be a clown's hat, an old-timey clown's hat, or perhaps a flourish dunce cap. Who's to say? Who's to say? You know, dunces can be provocateurs oftentimes, too. That's how they get the cap in the first place and thrown in a corner. All right, so uh, I don't know if that's uh, meant to represent uh, the day of the provocateur for any uh, particular reason. Uh, that's not altogether important, though. Maybe we can make some connotations as we go on with the reading. Uh, but like I said, not altogether important. No, what is important is it's November 4th, and hence it's someone's birthday today. So if it's your birthday today, I just want to say happy birthday. That's what's important. But if this video finds you late, I don't know, days, weeks, months, whatever the case may be, and people aren't always looking up their birthday on the internet, are they? Uh, but if that is the case, I just want to say I hope you had a happy birthday in that circumstance. But for everyone else who's joined us to celebrate the November 4th uh, birthday, well, I just want to say I hope you enjoy yourself and welcome. All right, but before we dive in with the birthday redirect, something we like to do around these hip parts, and that's roll some dice. This is the Diecast birthday broadcast. Got to live up to the namesake. That's right, I'm rolling dice. But we do so more importantly for another reason altogether, and that's... For synchronicity's sake. Ah, oh, you didn't hear the dice hit. You gotta, gotta keep honest, right? There it is. A one and a three for a four. Oh my lord, we are just getting some synchronicity lately. Yesterday's numbers came up too. One and a three for a four. All right, so what is synchronicity, you're probably wondering? Well, it's just you getting out into the world and letting the, and the universe, letting the universe show you it's with you on your path. And you do that by looking for your numbers. Now, you don't have to go with the numbers I rolled for you. The one and the three for four is easy to remember, but maybe you want a uh, 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 mutually agreed upon number between you and the universe. And hey, I don't blame you. Uh, that being said, you're probably going to want to take your own set of dice with you. Uh, for the very least, so you can ascribe directional values to number sets and figure out time limits by which to go in those directions. And that being said, once you reach the end of that time limit going in that direction, you stop, compose yourself, and look for your signs. That's right, your numbers or perhaps even something anomalous. You know, maybe somebody's uh, walking down a street in a pink shirt and everybody else is wearing something just very blasé and bland. Hey, you know what? That kind of thing stands out. So maybe take a moment, roll the dice, figure out how long to follow those individuals for. And that's that's a great opportunity to put some time between you and them so that it doesn't look like you're following them. We're not out here to stalk people. We just want the universe to... Uh, tell us where to go and sometimes that's the situation but hey let's say they do uh find you stalking them they figure it out hey you know what just come correct be honest about it hey i'm just it's my birthday i'm out here uh trying to go on a little bit of a synchronicity walk here and they'll be like what are you talking about so show them this video maybe you know what uh, it might turn out it's their birthday too you know what sometimes these things have a way of working out that way and you know what maybe they join you on the journey or maybe you ask them where they were going and it turns out they were going to say I don't know a clown shop perhaps that you know what sometimes the day takes on a theme too and get them they needed to get them a clown hat that's right so you know what maybe go with them and maybe you find that it's just uh, it speaks to your birthday better than the book did with the clown hat who's to say but any event that synchronicity kind of in a nutshell get out there let the universe show you it's with you on your path uh, path see taste touch feel the magic and if you do you're gonna see why I brought it up that's right get out and do something fun you're a provocateur i'm sure you'll enjoy it all right in any event let's dive in with the birthday read shall we your month is november your day is the fourth and your sign is 11 to 13 degrees scorpio of the scorpio two period specifically and your quality and element is fixed water now what does that mean well that's a different video altogether so go look for that one if you're interested but we got a birthday read to get underway right november 4th the day of the provocateur those born on November 4 have a knack for arousing controversy. They are highly stimulating in both word and deed. And, the, and in their family and social circle, they tend to be dominant and valued members. And though many November 4 people assume a conservative, perhaps almost 
colorless appearance, their charm and wealth of personality becomes apparent in conversation. And on first meeting, they usually make a lively yet sincere impression and may not show right away just how provocative they can be. In fact, the longer one knows them, the more one sees that they not only have a talent for stirring up the pot, but also piercing the thickest armor in their personal contacts. Uh, masters at breaching defenses, they usually know exactly where the soft or vulnerable parts are. And indeed, once they get rolling, they can be very difficult for anyone, including themselves, to stop. Recognizing their limitations, controlling their energies, and becoming more realistic in their goals, and above all, remaining constructive in their outlook is important for them to keep in mind. November 4 people have a fine sense of humor that at, can at one time be dry and restrained, at another infectious, even hilarious. It is a very human and positive attribute that allows them to quickly bridge differences in race, class, or religion. Uh, through a joke and a bit of laughter, they can put people at ease and break the ice in an uncomfortable situation. On the other side, depression is very alien to the November 4 character, and therefore those born on this day have a great deal of trouble understanding the negativity of others. The problem is that they sometimes fail to recognize how serious things have gotten in their own situation and can remain unduly optimistic when prospects are in fact bleak. November 4 people are highly magnetic personalities who not only have a talent for persuasion, but are adept at ignoring or dexterously parrying criticism directed their way. In their minds, sooner or later, they will win others over to their point of view. Yet, ultimately, they can misjudge the receptiveness of their audience, especially since their viewpoints can be quite extreme and their presentation provocative and even upsetting. By thus creating a chaotic situation, they may undercut their own influence. November 4, people love to be served, but usually return the favor by getting at least as much as they get. In fact, they can be overly giving, and others may take advantage of them or come to expect too much. And for some November 4 people, the expectations of others can become intolerably heavy after a while, even for the seemingly boundless energy they possess. Particularly women born in this day must be aware of getting involved with the wrong man. Men born in this day tend to become indispensable emotionally, and perhaps too much so for those close to them, and thus must be aware of fostering dependency. All right. How about that for a dynamic birthday breakdown? All right. Hey, I like to dive in with some notes, provide a little bit of a commentary on what we just read. Sometimes we can make connotations with things that I've read in the past, uh, since you probably don't have the book. But in any event, hey, let's get into it, shall we? November 4, the day of the provocateur. All right. A knack for arousing controversy, the reading says, and as a dominant valued members of their social circle, and their family, who are often highly stimulated by your actions, and I would dare say antics, probably too. Uh, going by the title, I'm a little surprised the description of assuming conservative colorless air is mentioned, uh, at least preceding your abilities to stir up situations. Uh, but being a kind of dark horse instigator myself, after a sort, um, I'd argue one of the principal necessary characteristics to being as much is being able to say the right things and then fade away into the background. And the reading claims that you're a master at breaching defenses and finding vulnerable points and are difficult to stop once you've stepped out of your unassuming facade and entered the arena. And to some extent, I'd argue it's, very, it's this very facade that allows you uh, to do as much, all right? Uh, as people's defenses are down from the onset, right? They don't really think of you as anybody who's going to be able to come in and upset the system, right? Uh, and this dynamic is further emboldened by, emboldened rather, by the fact uh, that those born in this day are apparently further disposed to be in possession 
of the sense of humor. That's right. It's huge, which is also a paramount ability. Uh, it, it further lowers people's defenses. And as the reading uh, relates, it bridges differences uh, between, you know, races and religions as such. Uh, what else we got here? It also eases uncomfortable situations. That one might be the most important. Uh, I do appreciate this objective analysis uh, on the obverse, however. Uh, examining how you might be oblivious to the seriousness of any given situation that you may have gotten yourself into, right? Uh, such, as, uh, such as the dynamic of perhaps pushing things too far, but continuing to ride that wave uh, that comes from getting a laugh. Yeah, I know it all too, all too well, right? You don't know when to step away, when to call it quits. You got to keep going, keep going. And then sometimes you went too far, right? Because we're not all stand-up comedians who are practicing the same hour, right? We got to live fast and loose in the situation that's presented to us. Uh, and some, some of us aren't as crafty and, uh, and off-the-cuff quick as others may be. And you're not a Mercury rulership either, so uh, that might be part of the reason why you don't really cotton to as much. Unless, unless you do. What do I? Then I'm speaking out of school. Uh, that being, and we're gotten, I'm getting ahead of myself. We haven't got to your numbers of planets yet. Any event, such as the dynamic of pushing things too far, like I said, uh, or uh, more or more dramatic cases, uh, as the reading relates, the ensuing chaos undercutting your influence kind of the same thing but i'd say it behooves of one to know when to walk away with the win all right and that's just something you learn over time i would argue uh the breakdown concludes uh to uh, with some warnings with regard to how your energy can be untenable and heavy expectations can also creep up uh, and potentially take advantage of you and uh, they round out the reading very interestingly like that way uh, so it's a very dynamic day, complete with surprises and uh, merited concerns to also consider. So uh, I thought it was a really good one. Uh, that being said, let's dive in with your numbers and planets, like I mentioned before. All right. Those born on the fourth day of the month are ruled by the number four and by the planet Uranus. And people ruled by the number four have their very own, often peculiar, way of doing things. And Uranus indicates sudden changeability and unpredictable actions and traits that can be magnified in November for people. And generally those ruled by the number four are not overly concerned with money uh, and they're vulnerable to psychological hurt. Uh, but uh, you like to focus on ideals. Uh, and there's no exception there. Uh, and you're, those ruled by the number four, like I said, vulnerable to psychological hurt, particularly when it comes to rejection by their group, which they take very hard. And the connection of Uranus with the ruler of Scorpio, which is Pluto, and a co-rulership with Mars, indicates a dynamic sexual magnetism. Oh, hey, they didn't mention that in the breakdown. It seemed very important, so I'm glad they kept that here for you in the numbers and planets. Any of it, hey, let's dive in with some more notes, shall we? For uh, what you call uh, November, November 4th. All right, number four and Uranus for sudden changeability and unpredictable action as well as a kinship to yours truly. That's right. I'm a number four in Uranus as well. Uh, so I, I kind of caught into this particular reading. I saw some similarities there, uh, here nor there. This is your birthday. So um, you got traits of a rat or uh, you got the traits of unpredictable action as well as changeability. And Uranus kind of vacillates between these things. I got uh, explosive and erratics, but you got unpredictable action and changeability. Uh, not typically concerned with money, but ideals, and you're generally vulnerable to psychological hurt that the, re the reading claims. And I again emphasize knowing when to walk away with a win. Uh, that said, being provocative, there's an intrinsic baked in element of acceptance or rejection. All right, so know that that's what you're getting into and perhaps equate rejection with criticism, all right? It said you have a purported uh, ability to parry as much. So maybe just equate rejection with criticism, all right? Uh, what else we got here? All told, at least you can lean in on that dynamic sexual magnetism it says that you have. And I'm assuming the uh, Pluto lends that because that's kind of lends to uh, other folks born in this period too. Uh, but it's supposedly imported by your planetary co-rulership. So that's a plus. I didn't get that in my birthday. So uh, 
we don't have a kinship in that regard. Any event, that's been your numbers in your planets. A little disjointed in the read. I read ahead for a moment there, but I think I might have saved it. Any event, here nor there, one shot, one take. It kind of happens sometimes. You probably didn't even notice, but hey, you know what? All about honesty here, right? So any event, that's your numbers and planets. Let's move on to your tarot. Oh, your tarot. One of the more eclectic of the new age metaphysical ideologies, but it's here in the book. It's your birthday. We don't got to take it home and start dealing out cards to influence our every, uh, every flight of fancy and every whim. So let's just see what it has to say, right? Let's do it. The fourth card of the major arcana is the emperor who rules over worldly things through wisdom the primary source of his power and the emperor is stable and wise and the force of his authority cannot be questioned the positive associations of this card are strong willpower and steadfast energy negative indications include stubbornness tyranny and even brutality all right. Hey, this is a total copy-paste job. They didn't personalize the tarot for you in the least. But you know what? It happens. Uh, they did personalize your numbers and planets. So sometimes that's a trade-off. But what did I have to say about your tarot here? The emperor for wisdom of worldly concerns. Uh, you're also stable, steadfast energy and willpower. All right. Or maybe you aren't, but that's what it lends anyhow. Uh, the steadfast energy to lay in wait for your moment to shine. That's what I say. And the wisdom to know when to seize said moment. And the willpower to walk away before you burn it all down. That's right. That's how I see those positives. So be mindful of your stubbornness to keep adding fuel to said fire. Or uh, otherwise, you know, you set your... Uh, or, or setting your abusive sexual magnetism free, right? You got to be careful with that. Uh, you might be garnering people's adoration, uh, but you know what? That might come with some of the tr uh, the trade-offs there. Foster dependency, right? You know, that sexual magnetism can be very powerful for some folks. So don't abuse it, right? And I say don't abuse it because, uh, you know what? It might come back to not bite you on account of the folks that bring it, that are attracted to you. They might not be the sort of folks you want around, want along in the long run. That's right. So it might not just be thinking about other people's benefit. It might be thinking about yours too. That's right. So anyway, hey, that's been your tarot. Let's move on to your health. All right. November four people in attracting a wide range of energy to themselves can put a strain on their psychological and physical reserves. It is therefore important for them to limit their responsibilities and escape to a quiet home or vacation hideaway regularly. And those born on this day tend to disregard some symptoms of bad health, often because they are taken up with the concerns of others. Oh, we just mentioned that. They must take at least basic precautions to protect themselves from contagious diseases, and it is difficult for many November 4 people to discipline their diet since their passion for food can lead to cravings as well as binges. Weight control is a particular problem for women born on this day, and exercise is the greater part of the solution. I dare say they kind of said the same thing about yesterday there. They didn't talk much about the exercise. And even I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get back to the notes here, shall we? Mindful, the psychological strain you can put on yourself with your energies, apparently, which seems to be an increasingly thematic concern for Scorpios, all right? Psychological concerns, a somewhat otherwise sporadic mention in the health otherwise. It does creep up once in a while, but they don't drill down on it too much. But they've been doing it this period, like I said. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, that said, uh, uh, respites are recommended. That one doesn't get mentioned very often. Take vacations, your summer home and stuff. Uh, allow yourself to breathe, all right? Uh, concern for minding your physical health, too, on account of your focus on others is also mentioned uh, quite a bit this period. All right. Some folks, they uh, they care too much about other people. I don't say too much, but they put a lot of their focus on other individuals and they sacrifice themselves uh, in doing so. All right. Contagious disease concerns. That's a new entry altogether. Uh, STIs gets mentioned more often. And then that's not very much either. I think two or three times that's all but contagious diseases that's a first so maybe be mindful they probably say as much for a reason 
All right, diet and exercise get passing concerns here. And they did drill down on your diet a little bit. Don't be binging, all right? Uh, but they also still emphasize the importance of both. So take note to some extent. Uh, sometimes neither are a current concern for some folks. They say, don't worry about your diet. You got high metabolism or whatever. I don't know how that's dictated by the stars or, or the planets, but so be it. Uh, that said, hey, maybe take note. All right, hey, that's been your health. So let's dive in with some advice. That's right. Here we go. Adapt a more neutral stance toward life and work quietly and keep your emotions under control. Don't give more than you can sustain over time. Also beware of the demands you make on others and keep your sense of humor active. All right. That's been your advice, advice there from the book. My notes, I had to write it in the book itself because I ran out of space on the page. Increasingly happening there these days. Adopt a neutral stance, what I have to say here. I say find a measured balance. And this has been creeping up the pat this period also. Uh, you may have a capacity to go rather hard and fast in one direction uh, with less than great results, okay? Uh, so uh, by going the other way, you may break your spirit. So like I said, find a balance, um, find a compromise, emotion under control. I say the sense of humor can be huge for this, all right? You got to find a way to laugh during, when things get tough, even if it's just like, uh, oh man, I, I keep finding things happening to me. It's like with this camera here, one of my cameras broke, so I had to bring this one out and I've been fighting it ever since. Here nor there, find a compromise though, all right? Got to get these birthday reads out, all right? Wish people happy birthday. Uh, so, you know, in the, in the long run, hey, at least the humor can help you cope with the things you might be having trouble with. What else we got here? Don't give more than you can sustain. Once again, measured balance. And as for the demands on others, consider empathy, all right? Understand their side of things. And at the very least, you put yourself in someone's shoes, you might get some comedy material out of it. That's right. Thinking in a way you're not used to, it's going to open your mind up to other things. So maybe that's what you take from it. I know that just benefits you, but hey, maybe it also benefits others who get to hear the joke, right, that you come up with. Again, that benefits you, but you know what? They, they get a laugh out of it. I guess it benefits them too. Anyway, I'm rambling. That's been your advice. Let's take the energy down and move on to your meditation. All right, your meditation. Faith is sometimes more powerful than actions. All right. Once again, faith is sometimes more powerful than actions. All right. That's been your meditation. I'm not going to try to interpret it for you, throw some spin on it. I don't want to influence it for you. It's your birthday, your meditation. Once again, faith is sometimes more powerful than actions. All right. And with your meditation in the can, let's move on. To your strengths and weaknesses. That's right. Let's do the work. Let's see if we can uh, drill down on figuring out what, maybe we'll see what we can take from the breakdown and everything we've heard and see if we can figure them out here. Can you think about what they are? Your strengths? All right. Here they are. You're magnetic, you're involved, and you're charming. All right. Hey, I didn't guess those, but hey, maybe you did. All right. Your weaknesses now. Let's do the work. Can you guess what they are? You're meddling. And you're unrealistic. You only got two. And those ones are easily improved upon, I would argue. Hey, and at the very least, if, if you can improve upon them, just be charming. You got that in the bag, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah, those have been your strengths and weaknesses. Once again, magnetic involved and charming for your strengths. And meddling and unrealistic for your weaknesses. Okay. And with your strengths and weaknesses in the can, as it were, let's move on to those born on this day. That's right, let's see who shares your company. And as we dive in with those born on this day, something I like to do is focus on finding our passions. That's right, too often I get out in the world and meet folks and ask them what they do, and more importantly, if they like it, and they don't. And I would argue, you know what, figuring out what you like to do and what your passion is is huge. It's instrumental in being able to get on and, and live a life that feels fulfilling, right? And, uh, you know, it's understandable that folks don't have a passion a lot of times or even things they like to do. You get out of school, right into a job that just the first thing that came along pays the bills, keeps the roof over your head, and maybe you just advanced up the ladder with that. And you know what? You just don't have the time to put in the energy to figure out what your passion is. And even if you do know what your passion is, hey, maybe you don't know how to make it financially viable. 
So I think this is the perfect opportunity to not only see who shares your company, but what they did to get in the book. And you know what? Maybe we can draw some inspiration from as much. I know it's kind of a tall order, a big ask. Maybe you probably won't. But you know what? Maybe us just looking at it from that perspective is going to help stir up the fires. And at the very least, we see who shares your company. So let's get into it, all right? Those born on this day. We have Will Rogers, the humorist and folk philosopher, stage and film actor. We also have Robert Maplethorpe, a controversial photographer. And it says Enfant Terrible. I'm not quite sure what that means, but it's E-N-F-A-N-T if you wanted to look it up. Uh, and he wor his works raised obscenity and censorship issues. So... Quite the provocateur, one might argue. Who else we have? Walter Cronkite. How about that? CBS TV news anchor, journalist, and American icon. I don't know. He'd be considered a provocateur. Here nor there. Moving on. We have Art Carney, the stage film comic TV actor. And he played Norton in The Honeymooners. We also have William of Orange, the Dutch king, and he ruled England, Scotland, and Ireland with Mary, the daughter of James II, after invading England and forcing James to flee. How about that? Uh, John Sloan Dickey, an educator and a lawyer. We also have Martin Balsam, film actor. Loretta Swit, a TV actress, played Hot Lips, Houlihan, and MASH. Freddie Heineken, Dutch beer manufacturer, and the company president. We also have Ritwick Gatak, an, inten uh, an Indian film director of The Cloud Cap Star. We also have John Whitfield Foster, the Welsh pastor, Pentecostal missionary, and a writer of Israel Have I Loved. We also have Jeff Lorber, a jazz pianist, guitarist, singer, and composer. We also have Pauline Trigier, a fashion designer, Sir Robert Lorimer, a British architect, Dick Grote, two-time All-American basketball player, and National League MVP baseball shortstop. Two sports there for uh, Mr. Dick Grote. And we also have Carl Tassig, a German 19th century uh, pianist and arranger, Kate Reed, film actress, Will, uh, Wilhelm, or Willem, rather, <laughs> Bruker, a Dutch improvisational music collective leader. All right, let me see if I can pronounce his name better here this time. Willem Bruker. All right. And we have uh, Stanislaw Fijelkowski, a Polish graphic artist. And finally, Charles Kenneth Williams, a poet. And I know I butchered a bunch of names there, so let's make up for that. Uh, butchering things on my side yeah it's not done in malice it's just hooked on phonics it doesn't work for me with the foreign names a lot of time even those that aren't foreign sometimes as you probably saw in the event with those born in the state having been mentioned and hopefully you drew some inspiration from it like i said i know it's a that's a big ask tall order but hey maybe just hearing it finding out who shares our company we can draw some inspiration stir up the fires if you will but that being said that essentially browns out your birthday except to say your season is fall, your sign what's going to Scorpio, the Scorpio 2 period, and your quality and element is fixed water. And like I said, I got a video for those things if you just want to go further explore. But if you don't, you ain't got the patience, you'd rather read it yourself. Well, hey, I got an affiliate link for this book down in the description because this has been November 4th, the day of the provocateur, from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Eust Elfer. So I just might have saved you the, uh, what do you call it, the task of having to type it in in the browser. Now you can just go click the link and support the channel in the bargain which I appreciate. But you know what? That's not what's important here. What's important here, like I said, wishing you a happy birthday. That's right. So I just want to once again say happy birthday. And for everyone else who joined us randomly, or more ideally to celebrate the, the, the November 4 birthday, why well, I hope you enjoyed yourself and you join us for your birthday read. Now, I know we didn't really figure out what the clown hat meant. I mean, we made some connotation yourself, but uh, like I said, not important. But uh, lest we forget, Another thing here, you're three and you're one for a four. Get out there and let the universe show you it's with you on your path. Feel, taste, touch, see the magic if you get out there and do that. But at the very least, hey, you're getting in that moderate amount of exercise. That's right. Do something fun on your birthday. You deserve it. Now, for making everybody else's life so happy, right, and full of enjoyment. Get some enjoyment yourself. Meet some strangers and fill their lives with as much too, right? That's right. Any of it. Hey, once again, happy birthday. 
and hope you take care of yourself. All right. Get, get out there and let other fe people feel the joy. That's right. Happy birthday.